afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the special meeting of the Board of Public Works for Friday, July 17th, 2020. Um, all members are present. Uh, Dr. Campos, do you want to introduce our, uh, yeah. our departments? Absolutely. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. We'll go ahead and establish quorum and roll call. We have Commissioner Coloza and Commissioner Good in the boardroom here at City Hall. We are also joined by Commissioner Davis, who is dialing in remotely from his City Hall offices, office. And then we are also joined by Commissioner Garcia and also Commissioner Villegas that are both dialing in remote from home. We are joined also by our general counsel, Adina Hopenstein, who's uh, dialing in remotely from home. Uh, myself, I am here with you at City Hall in the chambers. Mr. President, you do have a quorum at this time. Currently, we do not have any speaker cards under general public comment. We have no neighborhood council commentary uh, for today's agenda. We do have one member of the general public that would like to speak on item number two for today's special agenda. No other speakers in the queue. All right, um, thank you, Dr. Campos. Hearing no speaker cards and general comments, let's go ahead uh, and close public comments. Also, uh, we'll close neighborhood council commentary. Um, and that takes us to our first item of business, item number one, the approval of the minutes for the meeting of Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. Is there a second to my motion to approve the meeting minutes? Second. All right, so I've got seconds from Commissioner Colosa and Commissioner Davis. Uh, any objections, Commissioner Villegas? No objections, thank you. Vice President Garcia, thank you. No objections. Okay, thank you both. Hearing none, uh, those minutes have been approved and we will move forward. Approved forthwith, so do, we don't need to approve minutes forthwith, do we? <laughs> okay, um, I am going to, uh, uh, I'm going to um, shake up the agenda sequence here a bit, and, and Dr. Campos, I'd like to, uh, and colleagues, I'd like to actually hear um, item number four first, um, and then um, move item, I'd actually like to move item number three uh, to second. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, so, item number four is uh, a request or authority for item number four. Council, this is for uh, uh, all council offices um, or all council districts. Item number four <coughs> is a recommendation recommending that the Board of Public Works, subject to the approval of the mayor, one, find that the, uh, well actually let me read the, the opening here. Um, authority for a $75 million loan from the Public Works Trust Fund to front fund COVID-19 emergency pandemic expenses to be repaid from U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency reimbursements or alternative sources as determined by the mayor and or city council. The recommendations are as follows. One, Find that the requested loan proceeds will be deposited into the city's general city purpose fund number 100, department 56, which interest earned is retained by the general fund and is also the same fund where interest earned in the public works trust fund number 834, department 50, is transferred on an interim basis. Two, approve the waiver of interest assessment on said funds. Three, authorize a new $75 million loan from the Public Works Trust Fund, Fund 83, or eight, Fund 834, Department 50, payable to the city's general fund, Fund 100, Department to, to be determined, to provide emergency cash flow in response to the COVID-19 emergency pandemic and enable the receiving and dispersing of emergency relief funds. Four, Authorize the Board of Public Works, Director of Accounting, to transfer $75 million from available funds within the Public Works Trust Fund number 834, Department number 50, to the General City Purposes Fund number 100, Department number 56, account 000955, COVID-19 Emergency Response. Five. 
authorize the reimbursement of funds from the city's general fund number 100, department number to, to be determined, to the Public Works Trust Fund P PWTF number 834, department number 50, immediately or as soon as practicable upon receipt of, an, of, of the reimbursement proceeds from the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency or alternative sources as determined and approved by the mayor and or city council. Six, authorize the, the public works executive officer or designee to make any technical changes or accounting updates to the recommendations above to effectuate the intent, intent of the mayor's request. And seven, request the board of public works executive officer to forward a copy of this action to the office of the city clerk. Um, so colleagues, it would be a statement of the obvious to say we are in an emergency uh, pandemic and that we are in a place where the city must be as responsive uh, as possible. We are also in a challenging, um, a profoundly challenging financial situation. Um, this department from uh, the outset of this pandemic has been a leader uh, in all of our bureaus and the Department of Public Works has been um, uh, aggressive in its leadership and participation in emergency pandemic response. Uh, and uh, the attachment or transmittal that is attached to this um, agenda item is a letter um, directly to the controller and to us requesting um, this loan um, or directing this loan from the mayor under his emergency authority um, consistent with the LA City Charter and the LA Administrative Code. Um, so with that, I would like to open up this conversation or this, this item for questions uh, from our colleagues. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. President, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, in terms of this item, first let me just simply say about COVID, uh, 19, which is something that was obviously of unforeseen for all of us. And as I have said before, the work that has been done and out of this tragedy has been, I think, in many respects, uh, certainly effective, particularly as we initially confronted it, the things that both the mayor and the governor in the state of California did early on paid off for us. We have still a lot of work to, to do, and we still have a hill to climb. Uh, but given the fact that this emergency lingers on, certainly fiscally, we want to be as responsive as we possibly can be. And this is basically only a loan. And so it's the least that we can do to help to su substantiate a solution as we move collectively together and trusting one another that through our concerted efforts that we will oversee uh, and overcome uh, this tragedy that we all face. So for me, uh, this is a no brainer in terms of what we are able to do with the Public Works Trust Fund time and again on many different projects. Oftentimes it's on construction projects, but this time it's on an international emergency that rests right here in our own city in terms of our responsibility. So personally, as a commissioner, I support this effort uh, and obviously we're gonna get paid back. And I think that it's the least that we can do. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Um, before we proceed further, I, I actually would, I, and this is, this is my mistake, I would like Dr. Campos um, uh, and, and Norman Tanada to offer up any further details that you would like to for the commissioners in their deliberations. Yeah, absolutely. Fernando Campos, executive officer. I'm also joined by uh, our fund manager, Norman Tanada, who's on the line as well. Uh, as President Good uh, stated, and he laid the framework uh, very nicely for this request. This is a request 
from the mayor's office to transfer or to borrow $75 million from the Public Works Trust Fund. As all of us know, uh, when an emergency is declared, which the mayor did declare on March 4th, 2020, the coronavirus um, pandemic emergency, that restructured the city of Los Angeles into what we know as the emergency organization, operations organization, that restructures the entire city and, it, and authorizes the mayor to be the director, commander in chief during that local emergency. There are certain provisions under the charter and then also the administrative code 8.29 and 8.30 that allows the mayor to bind the city uh, to move the city forward and to procure any requisition, supplies, resources that's needed to respond to that declared local emergency. In regards to that, um, the city has taken out some loans in general as a whole uh, from the Department of Building and Safety and also the Reserve Fund. Those loans have been uh, utilized from March to this to the, to the present date, uh, those loans are in the process of being reimbursed as federal aid is um, being reimbursed to back to the city. Our, this request before you, again, is just a temporary request. We anticipate that the request will come back or the funds will come back within the next six months. However, the request before you or the report before you does indicate anywhere from 12 to 18 months simply because by the time the process goes through in terms of what's eligible, what's not eligible, when the city submits a reimbursement request to US FEMA or other resources out there, it does take a couple of months for that money to come back. We're seeing that the money is coming back r rather quickly within a quarter or so or possibly two. However, we are recommending that this loan be authorized up to an 18 month period. Again, I don't think the mayor or the city council will need that much time to reimburse or to repay that loan. However, I think it's a nice uh, amount of time for uh, the CAO's office, the mayor's office, the city council to determine how they're going to repay this money back. Uh, along the same lines, the payment, or I'm sorry, the, the loan for the Public Works Trust Fund, it is a loan, it's temporary. This money cannot be written off on the city's uh, balance sheet. This money needs to be repaid back. As a reminder to commissioners, uh, and Mr. Uh, President, you're the first um, hearing this from the uh, Public Works Trust Fund. The money that is in the Public Works Trust Fund is in trust for depositors or developers that have left that money on our behalf to trust and to care for that money for a certain uh, specific purpose. So some of these funds are restricted. Some of these funds are also um, subject to the Mid California Mitigation Act fee um, requirements. So having said that, this money will need to be repaid back from the city and I'm fully confident that the city will reimburse and repay this money back to us. Um, just to give you some idea as to where we are with our finances, um, prior to this request, uh, we are, we've currently dispersed about $24.4 million in loans. Uh, that represents approximately, let me look at my notes here, um, that represents approximately about 17% of our fund. The threshold and the policy for this, from this board has been to lend out no more than 25 up to 30% of the Public Works Trust Fund balance. The balance as of March 31st, 2020 was about 142.9 million, so roughly about $143 million. Again, the loans that have already been dispersed equate to about 24.4, about 17%. This board and the city council and the mayor has also authorized an additional $15 million in loans that have been approved but not yet dispersed. That represents about 10%. So in aggregate, we're around 27%, a little under 28% in our balance to loan ratio, which is within our threshold, within our practice, 25 to 30%. This request would allow us or would um, exceed that amount. Understandably, we, we understand why it's needed. It's an emergency. Uh, this does move us into a category where we will end up being at 80% uh, balance to loan ratio. That does require us to dip into our working capital. Our working capital, typically, we allow about 25% of funds to be available for the ins and outs that happen on a daily basis. These ins and outs are deposits that we receive for B permits, U permits, A permits, excavation, work orders, land work orders. So there's a slew of about 25 to 30 accounts and revenues that we receive in the Public Works Trust Fund. On average, we transfer out about 15 to $20 million per year, but we also receive that amount and then some, sometimes 25 or $30 million. As most commissioners know, and again, President Goodyear, the first time hearing this, 
the Public Works Trust Fund has been increasing in terms of the balance. And we've been looking at the Public Works Trust Fund to figure out ways that we can um, utilize this money and reimburse back the city for any funds or any uh, expenses that they may have incurred and return that money back to the general fund or other special funds. We are working very closely with the bureaus and also with our accounting office. We hired, two years ago, we hired a dedicated fund manager to help us just with this an enormous, gigantic um, uh, exercise, if you will, or task for the Public Works Trust Fund as a whole. Um, I highlight that um, simply because we are going to go into our working capital, meaning that we're going to be around 20%. Um, I believe that within the next six to 12 months, we will be okay, um, especially knowing that the monies are going to be reimbursed. What I don't know is how soon that monies will be reimbursed and whether they would be reimbursed on an incremental basis, i.e. 10 million here, 20 million there, or whether the city and the, uh, the mayor or the CEO or the city council will opt to pay us back the full 75 million in one lump sum or one balloon payment. So the recommendation uh, before you is to move forward with the loan, approve the loan, waive the interest because the interest that uh, we would normally assess this loan would go back to the general fund. At the end of the day, it's the general fund that's um, paying for the, for the loan. So therefore we are requesting that the waiver uh, be applied in this case. Um, last but not least, we will cl work closely with the mayor's office, the CAO's office, on trying to get a, a more robust uh, repayment schedule and just be in, in the loop and in the discussions in terms of when we get that money back. One of the things that I will caution this board is if we were to get a demand from a bond or if we were to get a demand for a refund or a reimbursement, uh, that is multi-millions, and we have had those where, we're where it's a $10 million reimbursement or request for refund, that could jeopardize uh, our liquidity in terms of our working capital. Again, it's highly unlikely, but it could, it's a possibility, but not likely to happen within the next six to 12 months. So I'm very comfortable uh, supporting this request. I'm very comfortable presenting this uh, request before you, and I urge your uh, support on this item. Thank you, Dr. Campos. Very, very helpful um, and very, very appreciative or appreciated. Um, colleagues, Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, President Good. Um, and thank you for the presentation, Dr. Campos, and also uh, Norman, who's on the line. I know you guys have done a lot of work to get us to this place. I guess just uh, one comment and then uh, one question for me. Um, you know, I'm really proud that the Public's, Public Works Trust Fund is able to play this kind of role in an emergency. Um, it's really remarkable to see that the department is able to use these funds in an emergency crisis, knowing that uh, everyone has been chipping in uh, across the board to figure out solutions to uh, COVID-19. So I'm just glad that, uh, thanks to your work, Dr. Campos and your team, that we're able to do this. Um, and I guess just my question and, and really a request, but I know this repayment period that you said, 12 to 18 months, um, I would like to request if, uh, and I know you guys regularly come to the board, but I think specifically for um, this uh, loan, if we could get an update in the fall. I know that we haven't been getting the uh, oral reports that we the have semi, been. The semi-annual reports, um, yes. But I, it would be great to just track this closely in ways that we're able to help uh, with anything in terms of making sure that we don't put ourselves in any uh, dire financial uh, situation with any bonds that may come back that are asking for repayment. Um, I think that we would all be happy to help make sure that we get these monies back. Um, but I just want to put that out there so no, we can Absolutely, help. it's a great request. I'd be more than happy, Norman and I will be more than happy to come back to this board and, and give you status updates, whether it be quarterly and, and it could be a, uh, in a form of a one pager instead of it being an oral report, it'll be a written report, but just a one page quick update on where we are with the repayment. We will closely work with the CAO's office, of course, and the mayor's office to try to get a little bit more clarity in regards to when that would be, but I appreciate the suggestion. I think it's a great one and we, we'd be happy to return back to this board and present that information. Um, along the same lines, you made a really great point, and I forgot to mention this in my presentation, and that is in the 2008-2010 Great Recession, this, the Public Works Trust Fund also stepped up and assisted the city uh, during, that, um, during that time. Uh, we uh, allowed, or this board allowed uh, loans to go to the city controllers to meet our payroll. Uh, it allowed uh, loans to go to the CAOs to meet its obligations for other projects that were uh, 
financed by other alternative sources, but this uh, Public Works Trust Fund did step up and assisted the city as a whole during the Great Re uh, uh, Recession. So therefore, in this new pandemic that we're in, we're stepping up again, and I think it's a privilege and an honor to, to assist the city as a whole as, as, as the best way we can. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Campos, and um, thanks to Mr. Donato on the line as well. Okay, colleagues. Uh, any questions, Vice President Garcia? Thank you, President Good. Um, no, but I echo my uh, my uh, colleagues' uh, comments that if uh, obviously this is a, a time of emergency, and we are very fortunate to have um, Director Fernando and the Director of Accounting and our Director Norman to, that have been that have kept really good numbers and get, kept kept bookkeeping well. That we're able to do this. So I, I fully support this as well as part of the broad, broad in it together, I guess. Um, and so as a city family, I'm happy that our department gets to play a role like this as well. So I fully support this. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Commissioner Villegas. Thanks. Um, thank you, President Good. Um, yeah, I, I just support this. Thanks for uh, kind of facilitating this along with Dr. Campos. I see the urgency and I echo the same sentiment of my colleagues. Um, Dr. Campos, uh, in, you know, when you are speaking to, um, when you're getting updates on this in terms of uh, getting, you know, reimbursement over the next 18 months, um, and as you prepare to give us updates, um, can you let us know what kind of projects uh, are in queue um, so that we, you know, at least are cognizant of those in, in the event that there is any kind of like demand for bond or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely, Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. Absolutely, uh, Commissioner Villegas, we'd be more than happy to provide that update. Um, as we do get those demands, uh, the Bureau of Engineering is very, uh, works with us very closely and they give us heads up sometimes even years in advance saying this project is going to be uh, exonerated or this project is going to be abandoned and we know exactly what's coming down the pipeline. In rare occasions, they'll ever tell us within a month or two, so we always have a couple of months lead time notifications, so we'll be more than happy to share that information to this board as well. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I um, am grateful that we have this um, fortunate amount of, uh, of funds, but I just see through the report, it's, you know, it's dwindling, <laughs> uh, but it's at least a good um, cushion that we have um, and to be able to assist during these times. Appreciate it. Thank you. I agree. And I'm also appreciative of uh, Mr. Tanada, who's on the line as well. Without his help, I couldn't have done this. So. I'd like to appreciate and also say thanks to Mr. Tanada for his help. And Mr. President. Yes, Commissioner Davis. I, I just wanted to add that I have the greatest confidence that we will continue to work together at every level, particularly Dr. Campos and the staff from the mayor's office as we approach our federal representatives in Washington to understand our circumstance and our situation. This is a worldwide problem. We, it's a national problem for us, and we depend heavily on uh, those who work for us in Washington. And I, again, have the faith that we will continue to work together, and they will help to restore in us what we have trusted in others as we uh, let out this loan, that they will reciprocate our urgency of wanting to restore back to uh, where we were. So uh, there is no doubt in my mind that we have the equal concern from those with whom we are working to continue to make sure that everybody who gives uh, also appropriately receives. Um, thank you, Commissioner Davis. Uh, so uh, thank you all for the comments. Also, uh, well, I would just say this, um, you know, from the moment I joined this board, uh, and I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to uh, serve as your, uh, your, your, your newbie president. Um, you know, I have sat and looked at a Zoom board uh, and uh, worked with all of my colleagues from far distances, uh, never been able to shake your hands, uh, never been able to have uh, close-up conversations um, or deliberations um, and and uh, the 
uniqueness and the unprecedented and even treacherous territory that we are in is evident um, every moment. Um, and, and, and while to Dr. Campos's point, uh, it was significant, uh, the, 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 the efforts and the contribution that the Public Works Trust Fund was able to make in the Great Recession, um, we have actually reached deeper in terms of uh, the pain that this city and this country um, are in. And fortunately, thanks to uh, the great work of Dr. Campos, the great work of, of, of Mr. Tanada, and I also should mention and want to mention the great work of Kevin James, um, my predecessor as the board of this, or president of this board, um, as well as my colleagues here and, and past commissioners. We are in a position to dig deeper um, and to make a very uh, uh, important contribution um, to the city's response to this effort, to the mayor's leadership, which has been exemplary and, um, uh, 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 and continues to be so, um, and, and, a, and an inspiration for all of us. And um, this is a really important moment for this board. And so uh, I appreciate all of your great comments and, and commitment on this front. Um, we will watch and track and, and look forward to the ongoing uh, 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 reports from, uh, from Dr. Campos and Norman. And uh, with that, uh, I'd like to recommend we move, I would like to motion that we move this forward. Um, all these recommendations. Do I have seconds? Second. Second. Okay. I got four seconds, um, <laughs> and not surprisingly. Um, so uh, with with that, we have seconds from commission, from Vice President Garcia, Commissioner Viegas, Commissioner Davis, and Commissioner Colosa, Dr. Campos, um, and I uh, move that this move forward uh, forthwith. Great, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so with that, let's move to item number three. Item number three is, uh, uh, in, takes place in Council District 5, or is, is re reflected in Council District 5, Metro Westside Purple Line Extension Project Section 2, request to temporarily close Constellation Boulevard from 400 feet west of Century Park East to Avenue of the Stars for seven weeks, starting on July 17th, 2020, and ending on August 31, 2020, to perform piling and decking system for the Constellation Station. Work order number E1907871. Recommending the Board of Public Works, one, find that the board has reviewed and considered the information in the Metro Westside Purple Line Extension Project, Section 2, Draft Environmental Impact Statement, EIS, Environmental Impact Report, EIR, Transmittal Number 1, and the project final EIS, EIR, transmittal number two. Two, find under the California Public Resources Guide or Code, section 21166 in the California Environmental Quality Act, guidelines section 15162, on the basis of substantial evidence contained in the whole record that since certification of the EIS, EIR, there have been no changes with respect to the circumstances under which the temporary street closure being undertaken would require a subsequent EIR or supplemental EIR. Three, adopt the March 12, excuse me, March 2012 Mitigation Monitoring and Reporting Program, MMRP, Appendix 1 of the final EIS EIR, prepared by the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority Metro as it pertains to construction impacts. Four, Find under CEQA guidelines section 15091 that changes have been incorporated into the project which substantially lessen the significant environmental effects as identified in the final EIS EIR. Further find that there is no feasible alternative or additional feasible mitigation measures within the board's powers that would substantially lessen any significant effect the project would have on the environment. Five, adopt the attached CEQA findings of fact and statement of overriding considerations, transmittal number three, as it pertains to the temporary street closure and find that the economic, social, technological, and other benefits of the project outweigh its significant and unavoidable impacts. Six. 
six specify that the Metro Transit Division of the Bureau of Engineering, BOE, located at 1149 South Broadway, the board, located at 200 North Spring Street, and other relevant City of Los Angeles departments or custodians of the documents or other material which can, can constitute the record of the proceedings upon which the board's decision is based, and seven, approve the request, transmittal number four, to temporarily close Constellation Boulevard from 400 feet west of Century Park East to Avenue of the Stars for the piling and decking construction for seven weeks starting Friday, July 17, 2020 at 6 p.m., that is today, and ending on Monday, August 31, 2020 at 6 a.m., subject to the conditions identified within this report. Our uh, representative, or, or excuse me, our representative today on this item uh, is, I believe, Larry Shu uh, from the Bureau of Engineering. Uh, Larry, can you please uh, walk us through uh, this presentation? Yes. Um, thanks, thanks for being thank here, you, Larry. Uh, President Good, and uh, thank you for reading that lengthy uh, recommendation into the record. Um, I'm Larry Shu from the Bureau of Engineering Metro Transit Division. Um, the, the project is the West Side Purple Line Extension Project, which is divided into three sections. Section two extends the subway from the Wilshire La Cienega Station in Beverly Hills, being constructed as part of Purple Line uh, Section one, uh, westward two and a half miles, ending in Century City. Purple Line two project is uh, scheduled to be completed in the fall of 2025. The location of this request is the is in the Century City. Um, area on Constellation Boulevard between Avenue of the Stars and Century Park East. Your board previously approved the street closure on April 21st, 2020 for five weeks, which expired May 27th, 2020, uh, to facilitate a waterline relocation. This current request is for seven weeks starting July 17th, uh, today, 2020, and ending uh, August 31st, 2020. In order to perform piling and decking associated with the Century City Constellation Station. Uh, at this time, the decking and, and remainder of the supportive excavation uh, design has not been fully approved by BOE. However, an advanced uh, partial design for the piles only have been approved, which uh, allows the contractor to install those piles. As part of this request, a CEQA memo was developed to analyze the additional traffic impacts of the additional seven weeks of street closure. The conclusion of the memo was that this extension would not result in any new significant environmental impacts or an increase in the severity of impacts from the, from the previous closure duration. Metro stated that they have provided advanced construction notices and have provided outreach to the Century City neighborhood in advance of construction activities. Council District 5 has communicated that they support the request for the street closure and the associated peak hour exemption. And finally, the uh, LAPD noise uh, variance permit for construction was approved uh, for the period uh, from April 23rd until July 23rd, 2020. Uh, that really uh, concludes the, the bulk of my report. Uh, we have a number of um, representatives here from um, city departments, DOT, uh, BOE, Environmental Management Division, uh, Metro, and uh, the contractor, TPOG, to answer any questions you may have about this request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shu. Uh, colleagues, do we have any questions on this item or comments? Commissioner Closa. Um, thank you, President Good. Thank you, Mr. Shu, for your presentation. Um, I have some follow-up questions and a comment for Metro as a representative on today, Mr. Shu. I, uh, well, if, if somebody from Metro is, is uh, available, if you could unmute yourself, please. Carlos Martinez, Director of Construction Management. Thank you. Hi, Carlos. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, I had a question. Um, Mr. Shu mentioned that you guys were handling, of course, the outreach and notifications for the street closure request. Did those already happen? Hi, this is Mindy from Metro Community Relations. I can answer that question. Yes, the communication with the stakeholders actually has been taking place throughout the current closure and the proposed closure and have we been in constant communication with them during this entire time, especially since the implementation of the Safer at Home COVID-19 issues. 
So it's gone out directly, it's gone out in construction notices, and we also maintain regular communication by phone. Great, thank you, Mindy. And um, I don't know if this is a question better for you or for Carlos, but is this closure request, is this part of the plan or is this something that came out um, due to the current COVID situation or something else that may have happened? It was uh, to take advantage of the, uh, the traffic uh, reduction due to the COVID-19 stay at home uh, orders. So to take advantage of that, the contractor decided, you know, uh, close the street and advance the, the work. Got it. Yeah, I definitely understand the opportunity to, to take advantage of and expedite some of our construction projects. Um, and approximately when did you guys want, make a decision to, to extend this closure? Just curious. Well, the closure first started in April, uh, and it was uh, for waterline work. Uh, that closure expired uh, at the end of May, but uh, during that time frame, some of the work advanced for the supportive excavation work. Okay, so you guys knew this was happening in May? Yes. Okay, so, and this is just um, my, my final comment. Um, before I yield the rest of my time. Um, and I know that you guys have been doing, uh, it sounds like, outreach and communication with stakeholders. And I think this has happened on some other items at Metro before. And of course, we want to be as flexible as possible here at the board. But for me, I don't always like seeing, I'm just speaking from my opinion, street closures and street closure requests to happen the same day that we're hearing them at the board. So today is Friday, July 17th. The street closure is for Friday, July 17th at 6 p.m. So I think that makes a lot of assumptions that you know we definitely you know, want to give enough public notice, not just to the stakeholders that you're all notifying on the ground, but for maybe any other stakeholders who may not be getting those notifications, but may be um, seeing our uh, Board of Public Works agenda um, more that they have the opportunity to give uh, comment and feedback with more time between the actual closure and uh, when we hear it at board. So that's just a request I have for Metro to make sure that um, there's sufficient time between there, even if it's just one board meeting. Um, I, I think that's always appreciated. And also you never know what can happen if um, there's an appeal or something that happens during public comment, but just want to be mindful of that given everything that's happening right now and that some of the things in the work that we're doing um, are less predictable with COVID-19 and some of the traffic patterns too that I know you're all trying to be mindful of are also a little bit harder to predict. You know, some weeks were more open and some weeks were more closed. And so um, I just wanted to um, make that request uh, from Metro for future closures. Thank you. Thank you, we'll take that into consideration for the next uh, next time we come to the board. Thank you, Commissioner Closo. Uh, Commissioners Viegas? I'm Davis. good, thank you. I'm sorry? No questions, Oh, no thank questions, you. okay, sorry. Um, Vice President Garcia, any questions? Yes, I do, actually. Um, I wanna second what uh, Commissioner Closo said as well. I do, I have seen this come to the board many times on the day of, and I do worry whether uh, constituencies are getting the notices at their streets or they're gonna be impacted if they have to go to work. But my question to you today is, are any businesses going to be impacted with the seven week closure? I'll answer that since I'm the one that communicates with all of the businesses. Hello, this is Mindy again. Um, actually, no, the um, particular area where this closure is located is by two very tall buildings that are at about 10 to 15 percent occupancy right now, both of them and all of the street businesses have been closed since the COVID-19 safer at home situation. 
In fact, the property owners and all of the ancillary businesses surrounding that area have all said to us, please try to get as much as you can get done during this time while we have no people coming. So this is a really unusual situation where literally we're not impacting, mm -hmm. to be honest. Which is so that's good to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm happy to be able to tell you that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to hear that because I always get concerned that businesses will be impacted by parking or especially now during this time that they're already impacted. Uh, restaurants are now, you know, doing, being creative by using sidewalks or they're using the parking lot as their place to eat and uh, serve their customers. So I just want to make sure that we are also mindful and um, helping our, our businesses be, be successful during this time as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Any questions, Commissioner Davis? No, it looks like we have crossed most of the T's and dotted most of the I's here. And I do understand that this is a complex site for uh, the constructions that we are doing uh, in transportation in the area that we are going to the year 2025 before completion. So it looks like in terms of the testimony that I have heard that we have done everything that we could. My only other thing would be I'm sure we've talked to the council office and they're working with us as well. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, confirmation from council district five that they uh, support this uh, closure. Wonderful. Okay. I'm okay. Uh, Mr. President. And thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. <clears throat> thank you colleagues. Um, I, uh, I would just, uh, thank you. And thank you, uh, uh, representatives from Metro Metro. And I'm sorry, Carlos and uh, the, the Mindy, thank you. Thank you both for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I would just uh, I echo Commissioner Colosa's uh, concerns. I fully recognize the sort of dynamism of, of, of this work and of these projects, and there's so much going on and happening so fast. Um, and then you compound that with this sort of ironic window of opportunity, particularly given the item that we just talked about, this window of opportunity to move projects faster, um, which we are completely um, and appropriately seizing, um, but to the extent possible, I would certainly welcome um, a little more lead time um, on such significant closures um, moving forward. I know this is not a new topic, and I know everyone's working together very hard. I would just ask that we all continue to do that as well, um, particularly um, if we start looking at, and invariably will be looking at, uh, potentially more contentious closures and more cumbersome closures uh, uh, in the future. So um, uh, thank you, Commissioner Colosa, for your, your comments uh, on that. And um, thank, thank you, colleagues, and thank you, Metro. Um, with that, uh, do I have any objections, uh, Commissioner Colosa? No. Commissioner Davis? None. Vice President Garcia? None. Commissioner Villegas? None. All right, having no objections, uh, is there a second to my motion to adopt uh, uh, item three uh, forthwith. Second. All right. I have seconds from Commissioner Colosa and Commissioner Davis. Uh, Dr. Campos, uh, let's move this forward forthwith. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, have a nice day. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Metro, for being here. Y'all have great weekends. Thank Bye, you very Larry. much. Okay. Um, all right, colleagues. Dr. Campos, let's move on to, let's move back to item number two. <clears throat> item number two, uh, which is a, is, is, is a report regarding uh, Council District 10. This is a request for revocable, uh, for revocable permission for encroachment in the public right-of-way to the West Adams Heights Sugar Hill Neighborhood Association for installation of a lighted monument and improvements to the existing median located at the intersection of LaSalle Avenue and Washington Boulevard in Council District 10. The item recommends the board, one, authorize the Office of Community Beautification to grant revocable permission to encroach within the public right-of-way subject to listed conditions to West Adams Heights Sugar Hill Neighborhood Association, 
The encroachment uh, is installation of a lighted monument and improvements to the existing triangular median island at the intersection of the LaSalle, of LaSalle Avenue and Washington Boulevard in Council District 10. Two, authorize the city engineer to issue a no fee revocable permit for work to be performed. Three, authorize the city engineer to issue a no fee a permit to work uh, for work to be performed. And four, authorize the Office of Community Beautification to request the Bureau of Contract Administration to provide a no fee inspection of the project. A <coughs> representative today, um, do we have any public comment on this, Dr. Campos? Uh, Mr. President, we do have one person on the line that would like to make public comment. However, there's been a request to have the presenter present the item first. Okay. Our That's representative okay today is uh, Jerry uh, Bellido. Um, uh, is it Jerry or Gary? I'm sorry. Jerry. Jerry. It's, it's Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Um, good, to, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, would you, uh, can you describe the project for us a bit? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, commissioners, Mr. Executive Officer. And President Good, I haven't had the opportunity to welcome you to the board, sir, so welcome. Uh, my name is Jerry Valido. I'm the Assistant Director with the Office of Community Beautification. And today I'm presenting another adopt median project that has gone through the trenches and has finally completed its review process. Uh, the project was initially submitted seven years ago, even before I took over the program. And it was subsequently terminated by the community group and then reborn in October of 2018. The project is known as the LaSalle Gateway Beautification Project. And it will be installed in the West Adams Heights Sugar Hill neighborhood of Council District 10. The project is designed to improve the existing median located at the intersection of LaSalle Avenue and Washington Boulevard. And it will replace the existing cracked and dilapidated asphalt area of the median with sustainable landscaping. Uh, additionally, the development will also include a lighted monument clad in river rock, which will blend with the character and style of the existing historical monuments located throughout the neighborhood. Uh, the project has undergone extensive review uh, over the last two years and has received approvals from the Bureau of Street Services, the Bureau of Street Lighting, the Department of Transportation, and the Bureau of Engineering Central District, as well as their Design Standards Investigation Group. The uh, community group will have a contractor perform all the installation um, uh, for the entire project, uh, and all the appropriate insurance and liability requirements have been satisfied by the group on behalf of their contractor. Uh, the community group for maintenance agreement will be handling the maintenance of the project once it has been installed. So at this time, I'd like to request that the board adopt this project so that we may continue with the permitting phase. And if there are any questions regarding the specifics of the project, uh, I have Elizabeth Fuller present who represents the West Adam Heights Sugar Hill Neighborhood Association. Thank you, Jerry. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you and, and, and uh, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, Dr. Campos, we have our uh, uh, caller. We do. Uh, Elizabeth Fuller? Uh, yes, hi. Hi. Um, just want to say thank you very much for considering the project. We've been working on it a long time, and our association would be really thrilled to finally get this built. It'll be a great addition to our neighborhood. Great. Uh, Mr. President, I want to uh, thank Ms. Fuller for testifying, but also our staff who have been working with the Neighborhood Association. It sounds like an exciting project, and certainly it will be one that will add public value in terms of what we will be able to create at that site. West Adams has a long history in, in the city of Los Angeles, and I'm so pleased to hear of this report and what we have been able to do working collectively together. So I uh, support this, uh, Mr. President, and would like to make a motion uh, of support after everyone has given uh, their comment. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Uh, Colleagues, any additional questions or comments? I, I support uh, Commissioner Davis's motion as well. I'm, I'm happy to see that this is coming to CD10 um, and excited that they'll have a gate in that area. Thank you. Commissioner Vegas, were you, did you raise your hand? 
Um, I know I'm. I am. I have no questions, but I'm glad that this type of project is uh, going to be benefiting the Crenshaw district. Um, I'm good. I support uh, Commissioner Davis's motion as well. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Any questions? Um, thank you, President Good. I'm going to apologize, um, Mr. Valido, if you said this in your presentation. We have um, people marching outside, so there is some. Uh, noise when you're presenting um, but how much um, is the neighborhood council contributing for this project I know it's in here but I just wanted to I thought it was worth highlighting uh, you know what uh, Commissioner Colosa I'm gonna pass that to Elizabeth Fuller I'm not I'm not sure what their uh, financial uh, commitment is so uh, Elizabeth if you chime, chime in on that please uh, yes am I still unmuted yes yeah, you you're there Okay, um, we got a community beautification grant for this, which was a matching grant, 50-50. And so we've had it extended a couple of times, but so the community beautification grant is paying for half of it and our local neighborhood association is paying for the other half. Got it. And what are the, what is the total cost for this? Unfortunately, I don't have that at hand at the moment. Okay. It's about forty-seven thousand dollars, I think. Okay. Total. I think I see an attachment here um, where this is just a proposal that says forty-nine thousand. But I just wanted to um, thank you for your advocacy and for your work. I know these projects are tough to get off the ground, and um, it takes a, many years and a labor of love to get it through. So I just wanted to um, thank you and your team, and of course, uh, Mr. Valido's work on this. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. I, I would uh, echo, I feel like in the dictionary, by the word uh, persistence, there is a picture of this project, um, just having read the report, um, and, uh, uh, and, and it'd be illustrative for any of us um, in terms of uh, advocacy and, and, and really um, committing to your neighborhood and committing to your community. So um, thank you, Ms. Fuller. Um, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Jerry, and the Office of Community Beautification. Um, I'm a, uh, do I have any objections uh, from my colleagues on this? No objections. Okay. No objections. Do I have a second or more <laughs> from uh, colleagues uh, to move this item forward? Yes, I, you had my second. It was a Davis's motion. Second. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, and second, Teresa. Sorry, Commissioner Davis. Um, no problem. All right. So we have seconds from Vice President Garcia and Commissioner Villegas on uh, Commissioner uh, Davis's motion. Um, seeing no objections, uh, we will uh, uh, decide to move forward forthwith. Thank you all very much, and congratulations on this project. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have great weekends. All right, colleagues, uh, let's move on to item number five. Item number five is for all council districts, uh, and this is an uh, authority for expenditure for uh, truck owners on file. The Bureau of Street Services and Office of Accounting are requesting board approval and execution of an authority for expenditure in the amount of $6,400,000 to encumber funds for the Bureau of Street Services as needed trucking program for the period of July 2020 to December 2020, um, and to authorize the president or two members of the board to execute this expenditure and any as needed trucker agreements requested to meet the service demands of the program. Representative on this item is uh, Gina Mancha and Monica Shelton Frierson and uh, John Sapone for any technical questions. Uh, uh, Gina, please kick us kick this off for us. And I think Stephanie's here. Stephanie Clement is here as well from the department. Thank you all for being here. Hi. Oh, thank you, President Good. Uh, Gina Mancha. Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Commissioners. This is Gina Mancha from the Bureau of Street Services Financial Management Division. And um, this uh, six point four million dollar AFE is to encumber funds for the first half of the fiscal year for our contract trucking program. Um, 
We usually spend about $11 million per year on this program, but due to the budget's fluidity and unpredictability for now, we're just asking for six months worth of funding to cover our costs. Um, we have um, 82 contract truckers and they are a very essential part of our operations. Uh, we rely on them very heavily for the pavement preservation program, the street sweeping uh, program, and the street improvement construction program. Um, this, for those of you who are not familiar or too familiar with this program, it's, um, it's uh, independent owner operator contract truckers. Uh, and we've been um, using this program since the 1890s. Uh, so it's, it's always been an integral part of our operations. And we use them to supplement our existing fleet of trucks and uh, truck operators. Uh, the contract truckers haul uh, hot asphalt and grindings, uh, trash and solids uh, to and from the yards as needed. Uh, they're always very busy. And in fact, sometimes we don't even have enough with the current uh, contractors on our list. Um, the, um, the AFE is very critical at this point because um, as independent owners, these contract truckers really rely heavily on prompt payments from the Bureau. It's like their paycheck and they need to get paid like every two weeks and they're currently already operating, providing services for us. So we're hoping that this AFE can be encumbered as soon as possible so we can pay the contract truckers as soon as possible. I, um, I do have uh, two other bureau representatives here, John Saponi, who can answer any technical or um, operational questions, um, and Monica Shelton, who can provide more detailed information on the contractual side of it and the programmatic um, side of it. And um, with that, if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Ms. Mancha. Um, colleagues, any comments or questions on this item? Yes. Uh, Gina, I, I appreciate you giving us a historical overview. I didn't realize that we've been doing it since 1890, but I'm more recently uh, familiar with uh, the program. And over time, we've made some improvements in terms of the rate of pay that we give to the truckers. And I think at least during the time I've been here, we've effectively managed the program. And it has proven to be uh, a success, I believe, uh, based upon my observation over the years uh, that I have been here. Uh, we have also, and I'm trying to recollect, that we have added to the program. Did we increase the numbers of individuals we have put in the program over the last seven years or so? Yes. Well, uh, last fiscal year, 1920, we brought on 20 additional contract truckers. And okay. And we are maintaining a level of now of 82 uh, truckers uh, for this new fiscal year as well. Good. And so in our last action that we, uh, I think we increased the rate slightly to be in concert with the market in terms of other trucking programs in the region, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, four or five years ago, I think, we did something similar to that. Um, well, I, you know, we do have a listing of the rates. Uh, uh, and I see. Monica Shelton could provide more details on, on what the latest increase was. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what have we done in this area uh, in terms of uh, the rate of pay that we have for this program? Are we in concert with the market of other pro trucking programs in the region? Uh, Monica, can you step in? Yes, okay, um, thank you very much. Well, basically, the last rate increase we've had for this program was in 2014-15. So we are, yeah, 2014-15. We uh -huh. are somewhat behind. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. We are behind. I did some um, um, communication with um, the county and some of the other um, agencies out there that actually provide the services. And our services, um, the amount of pay that we're paying our, our drivers are actually a little lower than they probably mm -hmm. should be, mm -hmm. but it was our it was our plan to come before the board and request an increase mm -hmm. if we had COVID. So yes, yes. Well, you can't. We can't win for losing here on this program, 
and it's a good program, but obviously uh, this should be something on our to-do list, on our bucket list in the future, uh, because we definitely want to remain as competitive, particularly as our other um, brother and sister government agencies that also we're not the only government that uses this service. We have other levels of government around our region in Southern California that are out there as well. But I do believe uh, that this is a successful program uh, if we look at the continuity in terms of how long you have managed the program. And I would just love it to be a project demonstrating excellence, not only in terms of their performance, but in terms of what we do in terms of paying the kind of rates uh, that can make us all feel proud. So I support this program and I do know and I am aware of COVID and what financial impact it has had on us. Uh, but I just wanted to say that I look forward to us improving uh, the program in terms of the rate of pay for these people who participate. So again, I support it and thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Any other comments or questions from my colleagues? Hi, this is Teresa. Hi. Hi, I just wanted to um, have um, Streets LA just to elaborate a little bit on the um, diversity of the haulers that we have, um, since we have so many, um, about 82. Um, if you can speak to that, that would be helpful. Yes, Mr. Villegas, um, I have some notes here. Uh, Monica can always step in if she wants to add additional information. But uh, of the 82 independent owner operators, uh, five are females, 77 are males, and we have close to 30 substitute drivers that the contract truckers can swap in for themselves if um, if, um, if um. You sounded a little echo in the end. I'm hearing some um, some static, and uh, I'm not sure what that is. Miss Monche, it was a, some, someone just joined the line, uh, caller ending in 723, that did not mic, um, mute their microphone, so I apologize for that. I see. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Villegas, did that answer your question, or do you need more details? Um, yeah, just, you know, and, and you don't have to provide it now if you don't have it, but if you can uh, let me know um, just the the breakout. Um, thanks for the information on the gender, uh, but just the the um, kinds of, like, haulers we have, if they are, like, minority-owned or, you know, what kind of um, businesses they have, um, just a characterization. It's not a rush. I just thought I'd ask when you get a moment. Well, Monica may be able to answer that, Monica. Yes, I actually have that information. Um, we actually, for this particular year, we had our, our, our drivers to actually re register on the BAVM system. So that allowed us to collect um, the information that I have today, which is what we're showing is there's 68 other business enterprises. We have nine minority business enterprises, three small business enterprise, three local business, and one emerging business enterprise is what we're showing on the battling system. And that's Wonderful, it. thank you. That's helpful. If you, and if you don't mind just sending me that, that would be good. Okay, we'll do it. Appreciate it, thank you. And no more questions, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Uh, or Vice President Garcia, any questions or comments? N no, I don't, but I just wanna get a clarification. No question. More, well, I shouldn't say that. It's a clarification mostly. Uh, so this is a contract for the next six months. Is that is that what I'm reading? Because it says December through Ju uh, I'm sorry, July through December. Well, no. yeah, we have individual um, agreements with each of the 82 contract truckers, um, and Monica can answer if you know how many of those uh, agreements may need to be signed at this moment. But for the overall program. Uh, we need, we're asking for six months of funding right now with the intent of coming back to the labor law, um, you know, because the budget has been so fluid and subject to potential changes. Uh, so if the budgets remain stable um, and there are no other um, 
inhibitors, we will come back to ask for more funding to be encumbered for the second half of the fiscal year. Okay, so for the year would be, it's a budget of about 12 million? A little bit less, maybe about 11 million, 11.5 possibly. Okay, okay, I just wanted to get clarification on that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, Commissioner Cloto. Thank you, President Good. Um, thank you both for your presentation. I just had a few follow-up questions. Um, of the 82 uh, contractors that we have for this program, do we utilize all 82? Uh, the, yes, that, I mean, uh, we have a rotation, uh, and so those who are available when we request um, our scheduling, uh, are the ones that participate, but overall, uh, we've got plenty of work for all of the 82 contractors, and in fact, sometimes um, there aren't enough available contractors for us to use, in which case we, we sometimes have to go to broker contractors, uh, truckers, which are more expensive. Got it. Um, and just curious, over the last few months, has there been an increase or a decrease in how much you're utilizing these on-call uh, truck drivers? Uh, John Saponi is, uh, I think, is on the line, and he can talk about operational matters. Good afternoon, John Saponi, Streets LA. Uh, yes, uh, the contract trucks we use, uh, Gina's right, on a daily basis, and they are as needed. Uh, we had in the last few months, specifically with COVID, since we switched over to our ADAPT program, we are now on select streets, uh, and these trucks are vital to the completion of our annual resurfacing program, which includes this ADAPT program. So uh, we, we just kind of uh, switched gears and, and, and adapted uh, with the changing times, but the actual uh, production has not changed uh, uh, at all. Um. Got it. Thank you for the additional information. We understand that Streets LA is doing a lot on the ADAPT program, so thank you for mentioning that. Um, and also just to follow up on Commissioner Viegas's um, question around kind of the diversity of what our on-call truck drivers look like, um, I would also be interested in that information, and I think as a follow-up too, it would be really helpful to see of the um, of the types of businesses, small, local, minority that you outlined, um, how much how much of the uh, funding for the specific program are they actually receiving? That would be really helpful to know. It sounds like there's some growth opportunities here if you have a high demand for these services. Um, and it looks like there's also some areas where maybe we can improve the, the numbers for business inclusion. Um, and, and just one final comment. Um, I think you heard and we're all kind of um, wanting more information on this program and I think it happens probably every time this AFE comes to board is because we know how important it is to the services that you all provide. Um, but since it's an AFE, I understand that there's traditionally no board report attached to it, but I think this might be an exception that maybe I might request for um, the future when it comes back to board so that we can see all this great work that you're all doing, um, whether it's on the business inclusion numbers or the ways in which you're using um, this on-call list essentially, right? Um, that that might be really helpful just because you see that we're always so interested in this program time and time again that we're kind of like scratching out, you know, what, what else are you doing? We understand that this is great. And so that would be really helpful um, for the next time. Hi, Stephanie Clements, Assistant Director, Streets LA. Happy Friday, good afternoon. We couldn't agree with more realizing internally that it would make more sense to do a board report for this AFE. So on a go forward basis, we'll definitely ish, uh, generate a board report to get your approval on any AFEs or any AFE increases for this particular program. Great. I have a question, I have a point of uh, clarification. Is this is this pro more sense oh, to I'm do sorry. a board report, yes. I had a question. Uh, is this a federally funded program or is this locally funded? I believe it's state. Uh, this is, is, is this where the funds come from for this program? Are they federally funded? No, they're not federally funded. They're from our operational budget. 
Okay, so this is a locally funded program. Okay. Correct, but the pavement preservation program and th this trucker program supplements the pavement preservation program. That program is funded by uh, SB1, by gas tax. There is a, a minimal amount of federal money in this program. Um, oh, the, it, it is, it is, it's federally funded? Well, there's a, Gina, Gina uh, knows, it's about 11.5 million. Yeah. Um, project that um, the pavement preservation program as part of its resurfacing overall resurfacing program does um, uh, execute about 11.5 million dollars worth of work uh, as a resurfacing work that is reimbursable federally reimbursable through the surface transportation local fund uh, provided to us through MTA uh, based on our population size. So we get 11.5 million annually, and um, that part is reimbursed from the federal government. And is that a part of the salaries that we pay in this staffing in this program, or is that a part of our profile in terms of work and service that we provide? Is that, do we use those revenues to pay our staff in this program? The reimbursement goes back to the gas tax fund because the gas tax fund fronts it. But mm -hmm. um, so when we get gas tax funding for our operations, the amount that's spent on costs for STPL eligible resurfacing projects then gets reimbursed and redirected back to the gas tax uh, fund. Okay, I'm trying to juxtapose that as we look at our contracting practices in the Board of Public Works around the applicability of federal funds. Uh, so, I mean, one could argue if we receive federal funds anywhere in the department that everything we do is federal funds. Uh, we could make that argument. Because um, there's a little bit of federal funds in every department we have. Yes. So if, if your theory is true, then all of our stuff is federally funded. Well, just $11.5 million worth of resurfacing. That's a lot. That's a lot. But we'll talk about this later on. I don't want to hold up the board meeting. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Commissioner Coloza, any other questions? Uh, no other questions. Thank you. Uh, okay. So um, I do, well, given that this is a, this is a, a it is a new contract. Uh, I mean, it's not a, it's, it's, it's a, uh, a re-up of a contract, but a new re-up of a contract. This will be subject to the mayor's cost containment, uh, cost containment uh, directive from June 24. Is that correct, Dr. Campos? That is correct, yes, June 24. Okay. So uh, with that, um, are there any objections to moving this board? At, well, first of all, let me offer an, an amendment that this will be, rather than um, approved by the board, it'll be approved by the board um, subject to mayoral approval. Um, so I would like to offer a motion to approve with that amendment. Um, do I, any of, is that a second, Commissioner Vegas? Okay, cool. I'll, I'll second as well, um, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, any objections, Vice President Garcia? No objections on my side. Commissioner Calissa? Uh, no objections, thank you. Okay. Hearing no objections, uh, we will move item five as amended forthwith. With that amendment being um, uh, seeking concurrence from the mayor. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, uh, uh, colleagues and Dr. Campos. Uh, thank you, uh, Monica, thank you, uh, Gina, thank you, Stephanie, for being with us today. Um, Y'all have great weekends. We really appreciate it. Thank you, for President Good. You, you as well. Thanks. Oh, and thanks, John, also. Although it looks like we lost John. <laughs> you're, out. you're welcome, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, Dr. Campos. Yeah, Mr. President, before um, 
the desk is clear at this time, but before your board considers adjourning this um, meeting for today, just wanted to notify the Board of Public Works that we did receive approval from the mayor on item number four. Just a quick reminder, item number four is the Public Works Trust Fund loan for COVID-19 emergency response for the $75 million. The mayor's office has submitted that approval to my attention and we are in receipt of that transmittal and that approval. So therefore, I'd like to uh, make note for the record and oral record that the approval has been received. We will note it on file, insert it into our record, and also uh, note it as a communication, official communication from the mayor's office before this uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, excellent. Is, do we, does the board need to take action or does that, um, that? Nope, just taking, just making sure that the board is, uh, is very clear and the public is clear that the mayor has approved this and we can move forward and start the transfer process of those funds immediately after this board concludes. Terrific. And I, on that item, I do want also, uh, I think I was remiss. I want to um, also uh, thank City Attorney Adina Hoppenstand for her help in, 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 in navigating that process through the week. Um, there was some, some real uh, uh, work to be done to really um, just making sure all I's are dotted and T's crossed. I also want to um, thank uh, our Director of Accounting, uh, Miguel De La Pena, um, in advance um, for uh, his and his team's work um, on expeditious uh, uh, movement on this as well. Um, uh, it is a public works uh, team effort um, and uh, everyone uh, stepped up to the plate at a moment when we needed to step up to the plate. So and, if, and if you don't mind me adding Cairo Hunter and Misha uh, Candler, who is part of our board secretariat, who have been on standby since about one o'clock this afternoon, just ready to go, stamping the reports, getting all the documentation. In fact, I've already seen emails going back and forth, just getting this going. So they know as soon as this board adjourns, rock and roll and move this forward and, and move as quickly as possible. So they are, they're part of the effort as well. I would echo that, uh, <laughs> echo that, or, uh, that, that, that recognition. Thank you all uh, very much. Um, with that, uh, any final comments? Commissioner Closa, Commissioner Davis, Vice President Garcia, Commissioner Villegas? I just, no want, I just wanted to thank uh, Vice President uh, Aura Garcia this week who convened the ad hoc committee uh, we've got it going again to look at uh, our contracting practices. We had a very fruitful meeting, and so I just wanted to let the public works world know that we are moving forward uh, towards uh, continuing to look at ways in which we can grow and develop in the various contract projects that we have. Uh, and so, uh, Mr. President, I think you need to know that uh, she has that up and running, and it was a great and productive meeting. And while under the weather. <laughs> I beg your pardon. And while under the weather. You're yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I took some really good day call yesterday. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. I also thank you for that, Commissioner Davis. I also want to thank you for your presentation on Prop 209. Uh, Commissioner Davis took us through a background and, and uh, what in cases and legislation and how we got to today's point. So it was just an amazing a history uh, lesson for us to learn as small business uh, we gathered yesterday. So thank you, uh, Commissioner thank you. Davis. Thank you. you were absolutely perfect. Well, it's an honor to work with you, so thank you. <laughs> Terrific. All right. Uh, with that, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Thank you. I have a question. Where do we go for? Um... Give me one second, Commissioner. Just one second. Yeah, I'm going to say. Uh, uh, let's give, me one give me one second. Give me one second. Okay, just stay. Because <laughs> we have the.